There are many scenarios in sewing where you're going to find yourself needing to sew different types of curves and corners. And that's what this episode is all about. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects. We're continuing the Learn to Sew in 2020 series with today's episode focused on sewing two different shapes, curves, both convex and concave, and both inner and outer corners. These are techniques you'll probably need at some point in your sewing journey. We're starting out with the concave curve, and for all of these examples, I'm going to be doing a quarter inch seam allowance with a basic straight stitch. So I have my needle position set at 3.0, and if you line up your fabric with the inner right guide of the walking foot, that will give you a quarter inch seam allowance. When I'm sewing curves, I will first line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of my presser foot. And I'm going to be back stitching a few stitches just to keep it in place. So hit that reverse button, go back and then go forward again. And I'm keeping my eyes on this edge of the fabric and the presser foot. I'm not really looking at the needle. And as soon as I get a little bit of material at the back, I will be putting one finger at the back just to secure the fabric in two places. As I'm sewing, I'm slightly shifting it to the left here just to keep this fabric lined up with that edge. So that's really what we're doing with all of these examples is just keeping your eye on that edge, sewing slowly, and then continuing around just to sew this curve. It'll take you some practice for sure. Now this is a pretty gradual curve. If you're sewing a more extreme curve, you may need to lift your presser foot and adjust the fabric a bit more. But for this concave curve, I just need to gently continue to move the fabric little by little. And here we are almost at the end. All right, so I'm gonna backstitch again, hit that reverse button, and move it forward. Here's the concave curve that I've sewn. Notice when I try to turn this right side out and press it out, there is a lot of areas that kind of don't come together very well. So you're going to need to take some small scissors and start snipping into the seam allowance. Don't cut into the stitches, but get pretty close. You need to give the fabric a little breathing room here. So that's what we're doing by clipping into this. So I'm gonna do this the entire length of the stitch line. Again, just be careful not to sew into the stitch line because that will pretty much undo all the work you did. I'm doing this pretty slowly. You can also use pinking shears too, but if you don't have pinking shears, regular, very sharp, small scissors work best. Anytime you're not just sewing a basic straight line, you'll probably need to do some clipping in certain areas. And that's what I'm gonna show you with all of these shapes. And that was a fly or a gnat, great. And this will allow you to turn that curve and have it look the way you want. I'm also gonna press the stitch line just to set in the stitches. You can see when I flip the fabric to the right side, now that I've made all these small snips, the shape really comes together here. Here we go. And try to press it out with your fingers the best you can. You don't want to get too much excess fabric that's not being pressed out. So I'll take my iron and use your iron to help you here. As you continue to press this out with your fingers, you do want the shape to be as intact as possible. While this isn't a super common curve for me to sew, every once in a while it does come up and this is how you do it. Maybe in a garment pattern or something, but this is a concave curve. And look how neat that is, pretty cool, huh? Next, I'll be sewing the convex curve that's with an outer curve. And I'm going to be lining it up a little bit different. 
See how it curves in here? I really want to make sure that when I line up the fabric, I'm going to start sewing. Gently use your fingers to guide that fabric so that the edge is always lined up with the edge of the fabric. So your presser foot should always be about even with the edge of the fabric. And now I've got one finger on my right hand touching the back of the fabric. And if you kind of get off track, you can always unpick your stitches and do a section again. So don't feel too much pressure to get it perfect the first time. And you'll see that when we get to the edge, even though the top of this curve ends here, if I want to continue the curve, it'll move a little further down the fabric here. And we are going to back stitch here just to finish that off. Now we'll do the convex curve. This is the outer curve and we're going to be doing the opposite. Instead of just making little snips, we're going to need to cut some notches out because when I try to turn this curve right side out, you'll see when I flip it, there's a lot of excess fabric in here. So we need to relieve some of this bulk. So here's how you do it. Turn it back with the raw side out. And instead of just snipping, you'll be cutting little notches like this. And you'll want to do this the whole way. You can use pinking shears if you have them, but I find a small pair of scissors works really well. And it's what I have on hand. So you're going to do this the whole way. It might take you a little bit, but make sure you do this anytime you are sewing anything with a convex or outer curve. And you'll see much better results because you are relieving the seam line of that bulk. Doesn't have to be like totally perfect. So just kind of eyeball it. Again, don't go through the stitch line. That would be bad and you would have to sew a whole other seam line that's a little further in. So you're kind of pinking the fabric yourself anyways. Another good thing is because you're cutting on the diagonal or cutting on the bias, that helps prevent fabric from fraying. So this seam allowance should be less prone to fraying if you're washing the item or whatnot. What this is doing is reducing bulk in the seam allowance so that when you do turn this, it keeps its shape and there's not fabric stuffed into that space. So when you're turning something with an outer curve, there's more fabric in the seam allowance than there is at the stitch line. So that's why there's extra fabric there. And if you've done this before and you didn't do this step, you skip this step, that's why your project may turn out a little wonky and the curves don't look as neat. And I'm just using a solo party cup to catch all the clippings here. I've had this cup for a while and I just, everything extra like my threads that I cut off or any little things like this just goes in there and then I just empty it out every once in a while. Here are all the notches I cut. Kind of looks like a dinosaur or like a lizard or something. Now when I turn the convex curve right side out, the fabric gets compressed in there, the seam allowance, but since I've cut the notches, it's relieved a lot of that bulk. So it should press out a lot nicer. So I'm gonna use my fingers to press this out, I'm trying to press out the best I can so the shape is as intact as possible. Because the fabric is white, you can kind of see the notches in here too. So, and here is the completed sample. It looks very neat. Notice there is no bulk in the seam allowance and the curve looks very nice. Now we'll be sewing an outer corner and this is very common in anything with a rectangle or a square shape like bags or zip pouches, stuff like that. Do this all the time. This is also a technique in the drawstring bag tutorial I did recently. So I'm going to line up the edge of my fabric and this long side will be pretty easy because it's very straightforward.
we're getting closer to the corner and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Now the important thing when you are sewing a corner is to keep the seam allowance even. So as I get to the end here, if I stop too soon or if I stitch a little too far, I will not continue that quarter inch seam allowance on the next side and that's very important. So I'm going to sew very slow, do just a couple stitches at a time. Now see here, if I lift the presser foot and pivot 90 degrees, you'll see this is way too big and I definitely do not have a quarter inch seam allowance. So that tells me I need to do a few more stitches, probably at least two, actually maybe more like one. So keep stitching one more time and then continue. I probably need one more stitch here. All right, so I'm gonna keep checking and I'm going to use the hand wheel to do it manually. So see, this is too far. So one thing you can do, if it's gonna be too much, you can slightly adjust your fabric. So I'm gonna move it forward just a little bit so that the stitch length will be a little bit shorter than the regular 2.5 I've got it set at, but this will allow me to keep the quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to lower the needle and now I've got about a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to continue sewing. If you don't turn the hand wheel and make a complete stitch, it might skip a stitch and then you've got more of a diagonal line across that corner, but this should give you a pretty crisp outer corner here. All right, back stitch. Outer corner, really easy. All we're going to do is clip this corner diagonally and this is gonna relieve bulk in the seam allowance, much like with the convex curve we just sewed. You don't have to clip anything in the rest of the section because this is a straight line, so the corner is the only thing that really matters. It's very helpful to have something like a point turner, or in my case, a chopstick. So we're going to turn this right side out. Same principle that when you turn this right side out, there will be excess fabric at the corner. So by you relieving that bulk, you'll get a much nicer outer corner. So turn this right side out, press the edges with your finger, and this is where the chopstick really comes in handy. Gently poke out the corner with your tool and you'll get a nice pointy corner here. You can also use your tool to press out the sides here too, like I'm doing here, just to try to get as close to the stitch line as possible so that there's not a lot of access that's not getting pushed out. All right, here we go. Now we have a nice neat corner with a very square point, which is what we want. Let's move on to the inner corner. This one's a little trickier. Same concept though, just turning it right side out will be a little challenging and I'll be showing you that. So this is the inner corner. So start sewing. All right, back stitch. All right, so you can go fairly fast until you get close to the corner. All right, so now I'm gonna need to sew past the edge of the fabric in order to get a quarter inch seam allowance on this next side. I'm gonna need to sew a few more stitches, probably at least two, and then I will lift my presser foot, pivot 90 degrees, and that's about right at the quarter inch seam allowance. So, and again, if this wasn't perfect, you can manually crank your hand wheel and then adjust the fabric so that you do get a perfect quarter inch seam allowance or whatever seam allowance you're doing at the time. But in this situation, it seems to work out okay. So I'm gonna keep sewing down this long side here. And then we'll be done. You can see if I try turning it without doing anything, it's really hard to get that corner. So what we're gonna need to do is 
make a slit right in the center of this corner. So just on the diagonal here, take your small scissors because it needs to relieve this fabric so that it can stretch out a bit. Here is the diagonal slit and now it should make turning this right side out much, much easier. All right, here we go. So we're gonna start with one side. Just take my iron here and now move on to the other side. Because I made that slit, now I can actually form the inside corner shape that I wasn't really able to before because the fabric at this corner needed to be able to be split in order to fully press out the actual shape. So we're gonna take this chopstick and then there we go. And here we have a sewn and fully pressed out inside corner. It looks very sharp and neat. And you can see that the seam allowance absolutely needed to be cut in order for you to press it out correctly. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know below in the comments and be sure to hit the like button if you liked this content. And if you're new here, be sure to check out the Learn to Sew in 2020 playlist. I have videos on everything from actually setting up your sewing machine and also doing more basic stitches and of course, helpful, cool tutorials. And I fully realize that if you're watching this video at any other time and it's not the holidays, that this sweater doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyways, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. See you guys again in the next video.